Welcome to Crack It. Today we are going to see about how we can handle the traffic between the microservices. So suppose say my organization has 100 microservices and there may be a chance or there must be a chance that one microservice is relying upon the another microservice response. That may be a chance. Suppose I say I have a microservice A which is dependent on the microservice B. So microservice A internally needs to call microservice B and microservice B will respond back to microservice A and with the response the microservice A do something and that will return its response. So there are lots of chances that this may have this may happen so how will this communication uh, ha is happening between the microservices how is this uh, traffic is handled between the microservices is what we are going to see in today's video and i'm considering that i have three microservices running in my organization say microservice a b and c so in the um, suppose let's consider a client there are clients c1 c2 and c3 and c1 is calling microservice a c2 needs to call microservice b and c3 needs to call microservice c how will that communication happen will will the clients will call the microservices directly no that is not the case so in reality all these microservices in the real world in in our day-to-day -day life in all the organizations these microservices are deployed in the same network and not in the different servers so all these microservices should be deployed in the same network if you remember when you when we are discussing about the uh, docker compose yaml file we have provided the network in which the microservice has to de be deployed if you remember we have provided the same network there why because i want all the microservices which i want to be run in the same network that's why i have provided the same network name here there so in reality all these microservices uh, all the microservices of my organization will be in the same network suppose say there is a client and the client needs to call the microservice a how will that communication happen so how will that communication happen so client will not directly call the microservice a why because my network will be protected by the firewall so the client will not be able to call the microservice a directly there is something in between called the api gateway what is that api gateway that api gateway will route my request from the client to the microservice a or whichever the microservice that needs to be called So any number of requests to any of the microservices should happen from the clients say C1, C2, C3 to the microservices any of the microservices A, B, C should happen only through this gateway and that is called as API gateway. So first of all let's let's try to understand why do we need this gateway this this acts as a single entry point for these all microservices. So any client who needs to call the microservices in my network microservices in my organization they need to call the microservices that is deployed in this network through this api gateway this acts as a single entry point between the client and the microservice network why why do we need this single entry point suppose say uh, i i have a restriction in my microservice wherein only the client c1 can call me so how can I implement that restriction? That restriction I can implement through API gateway. So any non-functional requirements, any non-functional requirements from the external world, say suppose say logging or auditing or authentication or anything which we want to do with the external request that I can perform in this API gateway. Suppose say I need a SSL handshake that I'll do in my api gateway if that fails the request will get rejected in this level itself it will not go till till my microservices so all the non-functional requirements that i want to implement that that will that i can do in this api gateway and this api gateway is the single entry point for the client to enter into my microservices network and this is called as external traffic which is called as external traffic client calling my microservices through the api gateway is called as external traffic now let's assume 
this request is success client is now passed the api gateway and the client is now need to call microservice a but my microservice a is dependent on my microservice b and my microservice c so internally my microservice a needs to call my microservice b and c it will get the response from both of these microservices and then only it can respond back to the client with its response it needs to process the response from these two microservices and then only it can respond back to the client this communication between the microservices this microservice a calling b and c which is in my network in my organization network is called as internal traffic so external traffic is any client calling my uh, microservices deployed in the network through api gateway that is the external traffic and the call between the microservices the communication between the microservices is called as the internal traffic now i know what is external traffic and what is internal traffic so as i told earlier microservice a needs to call microservice b and microservice t to process its response so how will this microservice a know that or how will this microservice a discover microservice b and microservice c how would the uh, these microservices register themselves into the microservices network that is what we are going to see so we are now going to see how these microservices are registered themselves in the network and how they uh, how these uh, microservices are uh, discovering uh, suppose say microservice a is discovering b and c to process its response that's what we are going to see now so my microservice a needs to call microservice b how will my microservice a know the details of b and c how is this connectivity performed how will this microservice a know to which ip or to which server my microservices b and microservices c is deployed to if a needs to call b and c it needs to know to which ip or to which server or to whichever place location these two services are present or registered to so microservices a should know these information to process its response or to call these microservices how was this registration happening how was this registration of microservice b and microservice c is happening suppose say let's answer it in this way because i know uh, where the microservice b and c is deployed to so i can provide the ips of microservice b and microservice c and i can say that i can route the request through the ip communication if we assume it in that way suppose say i have microservice b is deployed to five instances so which uh, sup why i am deploying this microservices to five instances because i i feel that this microservice uh, b is facing a lot of request it is getting a huge traffic so i have deployed it into five uh, different uh, instances to make my microservice uh, b to feel uh, light so that it it so that my request will go to all five instances not only one instance will needs to bear the traffic so i have deployed it to five different instances if i have for five different instances i will have five different ips then which specific ip i will need, i will provide in microservice a if suppose let's consider i am hard coding only one ip then what will happen my, my all the requests through my micro service a will always go to one uh, only one of the instance to which in, like only one of the instance the instance uh, the ip of the instance in which i configured which may again what what will happen that will burden my that specific instance like which will totally collapse uh, collapse the uh, collapse scalability what is scalability like if if my uh, traffic is huge i need to uh, split my request to multiple instances my total concept of scalability will get confused or collapsed if i provide or hard code my ip here so in the microservice network always the ip will get uh, uh, created dynamically why because my scalability property is that so only if a huge uh, number of requests is coming to be 
we will create five instances if my request load gets lower we will what will we do we will uh, terminate two instances and it will keep just three instances so by the time i will have only three instances uh, of the that microservice b so i cannot uh, the number of instances or the ips all these will be created dynamically when there is a need suppose say again a huge traffic has come and microservice b is creating one more instance suppose let's now see four instances of microservices b is present that fourth instance ip i never know i'll get to know only during the run time how will i configure that in my microservices a so in the microservices world hard coding the ip is close to impossible i cannot do that why i cannot do that my ips will get uh, generated dynamically suppose my microservice one of the instances of the microservices down due to any reason what will happen micro my uh, my uh, scalability or the scalability that i have implemented in my microservice will automatically create one more instance and it will check whether this instance is being healthy or not if it is not healthy it will create one more instance which will route my traffic to the other instance so hard coding the ip is close to impossible in the microservices uh, architecture so what we can do we cannot uh, how will this registration can happen between the microservices how can we register it we cannot do it through ip we cannot do through uh, do it through dns why we cannot do it through dns even though uh, in the dns in front end if we give uh, uh, the host mapping or the dns mapping if we do in the back end we we are doing it manually by configuring or by providing the ip information in a file so again dns mapping is not possible ip mapping is more not possible then what else we can do to make our microservices communication easy we clearly now understand that all the microservices configurations or dynamic dynamic and it, it will be difficult for us to say uh the uh, how these communication will happen it will be difficult for us to say to which instance of the uh, microservice b a is going to call how this load balancing is happening between these five microservices uh, uh how the load is uh, transferred by the load balancer between the five instances of the microservices all these we, we don't know so also let's assume that if we follow traditional load balancing what will we do traditional load balancing we will do the dns names uh, we will use the dns names and um, i have already told that dns names will also not fit in the microservices architecture why because uh, dns mapping will internally depend upon the ip mapping so we cannot use traditional load balancers in the microservices network we cannot use ip configuration in the microservices network then how can we achieve this microservices uh, traffic between the microservices network so that will be achieved through the microservices patterns called service discovery service registration and load balancing what is service discovery so when a new service is added or uh, a needs to discover b to process its response a needs to discover c to call uh, the microservice c that discovery of the services is called as service discovery and service registration is each of the microservices deployed in my network needs to uh, register themselves that these are the services available suppose say one new service is coming microservice d it needs to go register saying that i am new and i am present in this microservice network and that registration is called as service registration and we need to perform load balancing as well why do we need to perform load balancing when a huge traffic comes to the microservice b the microservice uh, b and the microservice b has five instances how will my request will get uh, transferred to all the five instances without uh, without making only one instance to burden it so how is this uh, this will happen that will happen through the load balancing so with all these microservices patterns only we can handle the microservices traffic service discovery service registration and load balancing so through concept we understood what these three terms are we will uh, Uh, we will go deep dive into these three concepts in our future videos along with the coding
we'll meet soon in coding in a session of service discovery service registration and load balancing thanks for watching crack it please do like share comment and subscribe for the updates you please let us know in the comment section if you want to discuss any specific topic we'll discuss it for sure